Hey everybody and welcome to another iOS development video from the Electronic Armory. In this video we'll continue down our path learning Swift 4 and iOS development. Make sure you watch the previous videos and subscribe to this channel to see more on all things iOS, Android, 3D modeling, game development, and everything else to arm yourself in the digital world. So let's get started. What we want to do is now jump into classes. Classes allow us to group in a whole bunch of variables and functions, basically everything that I just showed you, into a cohesive object that we can reuse over and over again, kind of as a, as a template. Now, if you're familiar with classes, um, this is just this should be pretty straightforward for you, but we started off with a class keyword and the name of the class. And so the name of the class for this one, I'm just going to do a mobile developer. We want to create objects of mobile developer types. And we can just say, yep, there's the, the body of the class. If you want it to inherit from another type, if you're familiar with that, we can do colon, and then we can inherit from different other classes. So we can, we can say we, we want the, the values and the functionality of another class um, by putting a class type by putting it here. And so I'm just going to start off with NS object, which is the kind of top level class. There's not too many things inside of NS object, but it does allow us to have uh, different things that I want to show you. Okay, actually, we're going to turn this off by clicking and holding. I should have done this earlier, my apologies, and just say manually run. So we'll have to click that play button, but that'll prevent it from continuously jumping up and scrolling up. Okay, so our mobile developer is an object, and you can think about these as real-world objects. So if I create a, mo a new mobile developer, that mobile developer is going to have a name, and so I'm just going to type in person name, and that's going to be a string. And we're going to put in a default value of, let's just say no value or no name. That would probably be a little bit better one. And then a mobile developer also has an experience level, so experience level and this might be a string or maybe it's another object or maybe it's a integer or something like level one level two and maybe the default is senior level junior level or no level because i might want to explicitly have the the developer who's using this code uh explicitly put in a value for that okay so what we need to do is now uh, we need to create an, an initializer and the initializer will allow us to create an instant or instant. What the initializer will do is instantiate a version of our class. So in other words, we can create multiple copies of this class uh, and create objects that we can operate on. Uh, so to do that, we create, well, we type in init and the init is going to be our initializer. So if I enter on that, because I've, in, I've inherited from the NS object, it's going to say I need to override the current value of init, which is in NS object. So NS object has its own version of init, and that's why we're going to override it. Uh, if you did not use that, if I, if I just wanted to say I want to create a blank object uh, that doesn't inherit from anything, it's a clean slate, and I type in init and hit enter, it's not going to put in that override. Okay, it's just going to say, what parameters do you want? This is just a function. But notice that we don't have the f-u-n-c prefix to our init. And this is because this is a, you can think about it as a built-in function to our class here. Okay, so let me undo that until we're back to where we started. The first thing I need to do is I need to actually call the NS object super init. So if you type in super.init, that will allow us to initialize all the other stuff that our parent class that we're inheriting from, all of its functionality as well by just calling that line of code. If you don't type that in or if you forget it, it'll give you an error. And then finally, it's going to ask us the code. So control forward slash is going to put our placeholder there. And for this one, I am just going to type in print initializing. Okay, so I won't do anything until we create a new mobile developer. So let's cr uh, copy that class. I'm going to go down and just say let um, new mobile developer equal mobile developer empty parentheses. 
So this is very similar to calling a function, but what the return value is going to be is a, this entire object, all the code, all the structure in here. And don't worry if this is not making sense initially, uh, especially if you're not familiar with uh, programming in general. We'll cover this again in future videos. So once we have our new mobile developer object, we can start uh, getting the values of these different variables inside of it. And how do we do that if we put a new line there? New mobile developer dot, and you can see pretty much at the top, we have the experience level and the person name that we created. So if you just put type in person name and then new mobile developer dot, and again, brings up our autocomplete. And again, if you hit escape or it goes away, you can always hit control space to bring that back up. So experience level, just gonna hit enter on this one. Yeah, and so those lines of code are not going to do anything at the at the moment because we, again, we have to run Swift. So let's go ahead and hit the play button down there. And you can see our printout is initializing. So we know that this line of code, when we call that, it actually calls this function. And then it initializes our, our super class, which is in this object. And then it prints out that line of code that we now see there. And of course, these lines of code don't actually do anything besides, I mean, these are perfectly valid statements in Swift. They don't do anything particular. Uh, they just have the no name here and no level here that we have as default values as well. But let's say I wanna actually set those. I can set them here. I can say new mobile developer dot person name is let's say going to equal, I don't know, Mike. And the level is going to be, I don't know, something like senior. And um, that is going to set this object's person name and experience level to those values. But I have no way of printing this, these values out or getting a summary of what's in this object. If I just do print new mobile developer and just place that variable in like you've been seeing uh, and go ahead and run it. In our case, we're just gonna hit the play button there. It's gonna say, um, this is the print statement. This is, um, it's a whole bunch of different mess here, dot mobile developer. So I know it is of type mobile developer, and then it gives me a nice memory address. That's what that is. It's, you know, <laughs> hexadecimal and uh, basically useless to me. So if I scroll down, um, what I need to do or what I can do is I can say, you know, print out the person name, oh, excuse me, do a person name here plus uh, new mobile developer dot experience level. Um, and see what that produces. So we're gonna run that explicitly. And it's like, okay, Mike Senior without a space. Uh, and that's just kind of messy and I can spend a little bit of time getting that formatting correct. But let's give the developer of our library or our code or whatever uh, we we're putting this class in, let's give them a, a nice convenience function for this. So we can create a function within our class and the name of this is going to be like print summary. Okay, and if you do uh, control forward slash parameters, we're not gonna take any parameters. We just wanna call that to print out the summary of our, our user or our developer, I should say. Um, I'm gonna remove the return type here because we're not gonna actually return it. We're just simply going to um, print it out. So uh, control forward slash and then print and I'm gonna escape and I'm just gonna actually grab the value of this as a starting point. I'm gonna delete that. So paste that in here. Um, I'm gonna construct a new string here with our multi-line operator. So I'm gonna use the placeholder functionality. So wrap that in um, basically this function. You can think about it as a function. We don't need this plus anymore. Um, also wrap this in our, um, so again, this prints out the value of this. And then finally, uh, let's get rid of that extra one and then three quotation marks. Okay, so um, we haven't done, we haven't changed anything when we're not, certainly didn't comp uh, compile and run it, but I do wanna print this statement here. And if I did this, it would not work because it doesn't know about this function. This function is embedded in this class. And so we're talking about scope here. The scope of this function lives inside the mobile developer um, class. And so it's actually going to respond to individual person and experience levels. Uh, so 
if we have, let's see, another, I'm going to copy and paste another one. And instead of this one, we're just going to say um, Bob. And Bob is a junior. I'm going to print out this summary here. Of course, this doesn't work. It's giving me an error. But this print summary is going to be called on the object that um, that you use on it. So we need to say Newton Mobile Developer dot print summary. Uh, I can't re reuse this this uh, variable name, so I'm just going to say another mobile developer. Copy that, paste that down there, paste that down there, and of course, because this is a function within a class, we need to uh, prepend it with another uh, with the the variable here. So variable name. Uh, of the instance dot and then the function that lives inside of our our um, our class. Okay, so print summary is uh, the value of this. So once we have that, I'm going to run that, uh, and it looks like I forgot to forgot to line up the uh, closing bracket there. So let me just go ahead and add that to the end of our multi line. Hit enter, run this. Oh, and so I actually made a huge mistake. And uh, that's what I get for copying and pasting. But uh, this new developer, mobile developer, should not be new developer. It's going to use the value of this. And we mentioned scope before. All this is in, in one scope. This should not be a variable name. This should just be self. Uh, so my apologies if you were following along for, for that long. Um, and so that's why I was getting the same value here. If I rerun that. Cool. So we have initializing and then the name, the experience level, the name, the experience level of our second object. But this this doesn't help us too much. It just kind of prints those out. So what we could do is uh, we can format this a little bit to be like name, space, and then um, experience, um, space. All right, so uh, let's talk about the, let's talk a little bit more about the triple quotation marks here. The triple quotation marks is, if I run this, let me just show this what this looks like. Now it's indented that, which is, should be pretty obvious, but the reason it indented it is because Xcode's trying to help us with the formatting, and that's fine. If you don't want those indentations, which is probably likely, what you can do is use that last closing operator for the, um, for the triple uh, quotations and actually line it up with, with this. And so if I hit uh, tab, That'll line it up here just once. It kind of jumped it over and auto uh, auto formatted that as well. Once that end operator lines up with these, you won't get any of that tab. So what will happen is anything before this triple quotation marks will get rid of anything that matches up here as well. So let's just compile that and show you. So you can see that that got rid of our um, our tabs here. And so again, if we line up our ending quotation marks, doesn't really matter where this one is. If we line it up all here, if I even tab that and hit enter, or uh, not hit enter, but compile it, you can see that indeed it does add in a tab here because it, it's taking this one tab value. But now you can see how we can construct and reuse some of our code and construct functions that allow us to either debug or other things like that. Now, this is kind of, this functionality is actually built in to Swift. So let me show you what this looks like. Uh, you might want something a little bit more robust like this. Uh, we can certainly duplicate this, but I want to show you the built-in Swift way or, or the built-in way for classes and, and NS object and why we inherited from NS object in the first place. If I type in uh, description, you can see that there's a, a function called description inside of our NS object uh, that we inherit. So we inherit from NS object. NS object has this class, or excuse me, this function built into it. So we're going to override. If I hit enter and override it, this is going to construct, uh, a, it's going to override this variable uh, description. And so what this is asking is I need a return value for this and this works slightly differently. So if we put in the uh, return value, this is very similar to a getter. We can set our own getter for uh, the description variable that's in our class, very similar to how we would do it up here. So let me just show you this. We're going to return as a getter um, this very nicely formatted string. Uh, and it's actually, I do not need the print statement. Um, because I'm going to return this as a string. Uh, there's no explicit arrow here, but let me just show you this. I'm going to paste that in. Actually, we don't need the, uh, yep. So I'm going to paste that in after the return statement. And now instead of 
calling an explicit print statement, I'm going to hit command forward slash to comment that out. And I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna comment that out as well, just so it's not distracting. And then uh, new developer, uh, new mobile developer, paste that in and I'm just gonna do dot description. This is very similar to a getter, which is kind of what we've been doing all along. And then if you put an equal sign, it makes it into a setter. I'm gonna run that, show you what it looks like. Okay, and so this one actually uh, puts it out over here. If we put that in line, you can see, indeed, this is what it is. Uh, the formatting here is a little bit off just because uh, it's trying to center the value. Uh, if I actually put this into a print function, which I should have done in the first place, and we ran that, clicking the play button, scrolling down, and um, so we have this nicely formatted description of our class. And so this is the preferred way of doing this because what you can do is instead of doing dot description, if I just remove that, the print function will automatically use that description for me. So if I remove the, um, and if you remember, it was just type, it was printing out some hexadecimal memory location and that's not very useful. But now, since we have this functionality here, if I play this, it does the same exact thing. So I don't have to do dot whatever, I can just simply print out the value. And so when you're constructing your own classes, it's it's pretty important or very useful to override the description of your class to print out some interesting and useful information for whoever is using the class and especially yourself. Cool, so that was a lot of information. Uh, hopefully you learned something new if you're an experienced Swift developer. Uh, if you're new to code, hopefully that was helpful for you. Uh, please subscribe and like this video if you want to see more. And we'll be coming out with new videos for Swift 4 and iOS very soon. Of course, we also have different videos on this channel. We have videos for game development, Android development, Raspberry Pi, and much, much more. So again, make sure you subscribe and like it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.